If you did not bring a Bible and you want to read, put up your hands. Anybody else? Yes. Buddy, I, I wish you could read. I wish you could read. All right, anybody know? You want to read? You want to read? You find your Bible that you can read. What's that? You change your mind. Well, how about if I give you this one? You want to read too? Dude, you can't read. You can't read? No. Well, that would be kind of... That'd be kind of difficult then. I don't know how old these guys are. He's five. We'll catch you a little later, okay? I need good now. All right. That's right. Okay. Who knows where? Who knows where Second Chronicles is? You know where it is? All right. Do you know where it is? Did you find it? Start about in the middle of the Bible. Okay, and go back up forward. You're almost there. There's Second Chronicles. Now find chapter 36. You're in chapter 10. You got it. Second Chronicles chapter 36. What is today? And what uh, what do we call July 4th? Independence Day. And I don't think it was any coincidence. I <laughs> That's right, he did, didn't he? In that first song, huh? That a lot of our songs and the, some of the videos were all about freedom, weren't they? And that's what we celebrate. Ugh, Dave, going downhill there. That's what we celebrate on Independence Day, right? Freedom. Do you know what independence, who knows what independence means, though? What do you think? Not depending on somebody for their help. Good, good. Now, you guys are all pretty young. How many of you could go out and find yourself your own place to live, pay for it, and pay for your own food, and cook your own food, and get wherever you need to go by yourself. You can't do it, can you? Yeah. Not one of you can do it, right? Because any one of you can drive a car. Any one of you can get a job. Not one of you. Why? Because you kids. And it's okay. But you are dependent on your parents. So but one day, you'll get old enough that... And please don't tell your parents I said this. Please don't tell the parents I said this. Definitely won't. You won't need your parents. You won't need your parents. Now it's going to break their hearts. We're getting to that age pretty quickly. Elizabeth is 13 years old now. And she's starting to do some things that she wasn't able oh. to do when she was younger. She's starting to get a little more and a little more and a little more independent every day. And it won't be long before she's going to be asking for the car keys. And she's going to get herself a driver's license. And maybe she'll get herself a job and start earning some money. And she's going to like that. And if she gets older, she might go away to college. And guess what? Now she's not going to be with mom and dad. She's kind of going to be on her own. That depends on you. That depends on you. Some colleges are two years. Some colleges are four years. Sometimes people go to college even longer than that. Sometimes people earn a four-year degree in three years. It all depends on you. And here's another thing. You don't have to go to college if you don't want to. Maybe you're good at doing something with your hands. And you go get a job and get a, uh, learn a trade. Great idea. But someday, and it's going to be sooner than you realize, you guys are going to be independent. And your parents are going to hate it. 
And they're gonna say, God, come back home, please come back home. And when you come home to visit them, that'll be up to you. And that happens to everybody. See, I used to be a kid. Believe it or not, I used to be a kid. Used to be a kid. But there came a time when I found myself far away from anybody that was family. My closest family lived 2,000 miles away in Tennessee. And I was out here in Arizona, and everybody else was either in New York or Pennsylvania. No family. Just me and God. I was independent. God gives us freedom. We talk a lot about freedom. Freedom from what? Freedom from sin. Freedom from ourselves, believe it or not. The biggest problem what we have is our own selves. Tell me, Aaliyah, do you get yourself in more trouble than you can handle? Sometimes, yeah? No, no, your answer is yes. And I'll bet your answer is yes. And I'll bet your answer is yes. Oh, don't you be laughing. I know your answer is yes. I know your answer is yes. We all get into situations that we can't handle. Do you get yourself into more trouble than you can handle? Yeah, yeah. Every time you start messing with your brothers, you get yourself into more trouble than you can handle. And now your oldest brother's a real bad guy. He's a Marine. He's a Marine. Who's a Marine? His brother is. His brother's a Marine. Who's a Marine? He's a soldier. He fights for our country. Is it the Marine? My dad's in the military. They'll tell you that, yeah. They'll tell you that. All right, listen. Listen. Here's the thing. God gives us freedom, but when we sin, sin becomes a bondage. Can you sit down somewhere, buddy? There's a spot for you. The one song that I played this morning, it said, the biggest chain I knew was me. It was my own sin. Now, what about Judah? Judah was a free country. God made Judah a free country. And they kept their freedom as long as they followed after God. But when they didn't, then trouble came. And finally it got to a point where there was no more help for them. And who would like to read this morning? Yeah, one, two, two readers? All right. So 2 Chronicles chapter 36. And Anaya, I'm going to have you read starting in verse 11. Read verses 11 and 12 real loud. Verse 11 and verse 12. You got one of those the hidden verses? Yes. Yeah, okay. First of all, you need to be over here. And that's what, 9? Okay, go down to find 11. There it is. Zedekiah is his name. Okay, real loud. Zedekiah was 21 years old when he was taken captive by Rain, you had it right. And he raised. And he reigned. Eleven years in Jerusalem. He did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, his God. Okay, and there's there's still more there. Jeremiah. Jeremiah the prophet, who spoke from the mouth of the Lord. Okay. Kaya, would you like to try uh, verses 13 and 14? Real loud.
all the leaders of the priests became more and more unfaithful. They followed all the practices of the nation. The Lord hated those practices. The people and the leaders made the Lord's temple unclean. The Lord had set the temple in Jerusalem apart in a special way for himself. All right, good. Now listen up here. Listen up. And the Lord God of their fathers sent warnings to them by his messengers, rising up early and sending them, because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. But they mocked the messengers of God. They despised his words and scoffed at his prophets, until the wrath of the Lord arose against his people, until there was no remedy. So what happened was that the... the people of Israel, and that, in this case it was the nation of Judah, because the nation of Israel already got carried away captive. And the nation of Judah was left. And King Nebuchadnezzar from Babylon came against them. And because of their sins, they became weak. Listen, anybody, any nation that sins against God and refuses to turn to God is going to be a weak nation. God strengthens nations that obey Him. Our country became strong because we obeyed God. Now, does that mean that everybody was perfect? No. We've got a long line of things that we did wrong. But as a nation, we tried to serve God. We tried to do our best to serve Him. And we honored God. Since I have been a kid, we have turned away from God. Our nation no longer honors God. And I've seen it again and again that we have become weak. And where we used to be the most powerful nation on the earth, we're no longer that. And the more that we refuse to obey God, the weaker our nation is going to become. And that happened to Judah. Judah was the strongest nation in the area. And as long as they obeyed God, God kept them strong. But when they refused to obey God, they became weak. And other nations would come in and other nations would conquer them, and other nations would control their cities and take their people as slaves and, and kill their people and do all sorts of things. And again and again, God sent prophets to them and said, turn back to God, turn back to God, turn back to God. You need to follow the laws of God. You need to follow what God says. And sometimes they would turn back to God only for a little while. And they start doing back what they did before. Sometimes they would refuse. And it finally got to a point where they wouldn't even listen to the prophets. They wouldn't even listen to the people that God sent. Instead, they began to make fun of the prophets. And I'll tell you this, that as you go out into the world today, and you're going to find a lot of people that are going to make fun of you, when you say, hey, look, you need to serve God. Ah, what do you mean serve God? You're crazy. God is a fantasy. God is a myth. No, God is real. God is real. And He touches our hearts. Now, when we believe in God, when we choose to serve God, we're going to be free people. We'll be free from sin. And we'll be free to do what God needs us to do. But when you refuse to obey God, then all of a sudden you start thinking, well, what does this person think of me? What does that person think of me? And you won't be able to do anything because you're afraid of what everybody thinks of you. It finally got to a point where there was nothing more that God could do. He spoke to them. And He spoke to them. And He spoke to them. And they refused to listen. I hope none of you guys have ever done that with your parents. Can I say this? My parents would tell me to do something, and I'd like, eh, la, 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 la. I wasn't listening to them. And they'd tell me to do something, and I wouldn't do it. And they'd tell me to do something, and I wouldn't do it. Finally, disaster came. I would get in trouble. I would get a spank. Or I would get sent to my room. Or I would get something taken away from me. I would get grounded. Aw. Yeah, it actually happened to me. It actually happened to me. 
You see, your parents mean business. I know you don't want to hear that, but your parents mean business. Your parents mean business. And disobeying your parents is like disobeying God. Do you hear that? Doing a lot of this. You don't need to be doing a lot of this. I need you to do this. Unless you're answering the questions. Or if you have a question. We finally got to a point where Judah, here's God wants us to be independent. He wants us to be free. Instead, Judah was taken captive. They lost their freedom because they refused to listen to God. Finally, King Nebuchadnezzar. There's a there's a name for you. How'd you like to spell this name? Nebuchadnezzar. Spell that for everybody. Hey, what's your name? Nebuchadnezzar. How do you spell that? N e b e c a n e b u c h a d n e g z a r. Can you spell that again? No. But Nebuchadnezzar came, and Babylon was the strongest nation at that time. Babylon. Today we call it Iraq. That's the nation that's there now, Iraq. It looks like Babylon, but it's Babylon. God wants us to be free. God wanted Judah to be free. Judah said, no, I don't want to serve you, God. I don't want to do what you want me to do, God. I don't want to listen to you, God. God said, fine. Then take freedom away. It's kind of like getting grounded, isn't it? Your parents take your freedom away. Can I come out of my room? No. You still got more time. Or, Josiah, do you like to get put in time out? No. Why? Because you got to sit there and do nothing, right? Yeah, you can't. You lose your freedom, right? They won't let you get out and play. You got to sit there. You lost your freedom because you disobeyed. And that's what happened. Judah lost their freedom because they disobeyed. And here comes Nebuchadnezzar and his armies of Babylon. And they came and they surrounded Jerusalem. And they let nobody get in. And they let nobody come out. No food could get in and out. And finally, they just gave up. And the soldiers came in and they killed, started killing people. And many of the people they took back to Babylon with them. And for 70 years... Judah was no longer a nation. They were no longer free. You see, God is a very patient God. God, are you? God is going to call to you, obey me, obey me, obey me. Do the things that I tell you to do. Do the things that I want you to do. And if you stop listening, though, Pretty soon, God's patience is going to run out. And that's not a good thing. Because bad things will happen. So, do you like to be free? Yeah. If you like to be free... Serve God. Because whoever serves God, God sets them free. God will make you free if you serve Him. If you choose not to serve God, who are you serving? Because you've got to serve somebody. You may think that you're not serving anybody, but if you're not serving God, guess who you're serving? The devil. And he's going to make sure that you're not free. He's going to put you into, he's going to put you into things that you wish you could get out of and you can't. Because he doesn't like you. God loves you. Because God loves you, he makes you free. Because the devil does not love you, he hates you. And he will make you not free. 
he'll be just like the king of Babylon, come in and take your freedom away and and do horrible things to you. Choose God. You want to be free? You love that red, white, and blue? Because it stands for freedom? Okay, God's colors are not red, white, and blue. God doesn't have any colors. But you want to be free, serve God. And you'll be free. Alright, I'm going to stop right here. Nice short little lesson today. Alright, I want everybody to bow your heads, close your eyes. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. Lord, I ask that these words that have been spoken today would be heard and understood. Lord, I pray for the freedom of everyone here. That they would understand that freedom only comes when we serve you. That you make us free. Free from sin. Free from from our own passions. Lord, I ask you to put a heart in each of the children assembled here. Put in a heart that is soft toward you. Put into to them a heart that wants to serve you. In all the days of their lives, Lord, may they serve you. And may you raise up out of these children here a mighty army for your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right.